topic here, which is Blue Beetle. This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. Little little Blue Beetle uh, theme song there. Why don't you hit us with the synopsis, though, Nick? An alien scarab chooses college graduate Jaime Reyes to be its symbiotic host, bestowing the teenager with a suit of armor that's capable of extraordinary and unpredictable powers, forever changing his destiny as he becomes the superhero known as Blue Beetle. Wow, this movie is directed by Angel Manuel Soto and written by uh, Garrett Dunnett. <laughs> Garrett Dunnett. That's that's kind of a funny uh, funny first name there. That kind of made me a little chuckle. <laughs> Garrett Dunnett Alcoser. Alcoser. I think you got that. Alcoser. There we go. Uh, starring Zolo Maraduena. Give me all the props in the world for that. Bruna Marquezine. Uh, Becky G uh damian alcazar george lopez adriana bazara uh belissa escobedo uh elpedia elpedia carrillo susan sarandon thank you uh harvey guillen and raul max trujillo Trujillo. i think, so. I think you got that right Trujillo. that was uh, well done sir i think yeah, you did a yeah. good job for that one so as for the box office and critics reception this hauled in 43.4 million worldwide 24.4 million domestic the lowest domestic opening weekend in dceu mm-hmm, history where did you get mm-hmm. that stat west i saw that on twitter from okay. discussing film okay that is uh, that's disappointing um oh mm-hmm. discussing film yeah they do they do a good job um it should be 6.9 out of 10 on imdb and then it has a pretty significant split on rotten tomatoes 76 92 on Google mm-hmm. reviews, this is a 3.8 out of five, and but 3.8 out of five. Yet, 92 percent of Google users like this movie. Yeah, uh, it's it's a messy metric there, but you know it's just good for reference points. Yes. Uh, but now, what's not messy? This is this is you can put it in stone. You can take it to the bank. Our mm. scores and tweet length review. I'll, I'll start, Nick, if you don't mind. Please do. 85 out of 100. Uh, fun movie with a lot of heart carried by the Reyes family dynamic, in my opinion. Uh, Blue Beetle doesn't do anything new in this kind of above average boiler play origin story, but does does a lot of things well, uh, particularly the steamy on screen chemistry between Zolo Maraduena and uh, Bruno Marquezine. Bruno. Bruno. Yeah, you've been you've been fifty fifty on that. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. so this is this is this is the test right here. It's getting on that one. Um, but uh, but yeah, we're in. I would say we're living in the on the same street in this mm-hmm, case. Mm-hmm. Um, two point difference here. I gave it a little bit higher this time around. Eighty seven out of a hundred. The foundation of a superhero origin movie is still present, but this movie is all about its heart, both Jaime and his families. Uh, very well, and the action was very well done. Mm -hmm. i agree i agree okay now we got some of the fluff out of the way let's get down to brass tacks to the exit survey questions yeah Mm. uh did this movie live up to our hype or or our our expectations i think judging by the score that's safe to say yeah i think it exceeded it for sure um the only the only expectation i really had coming into this was from the trailers that we'd seen the level of action that i expected Mm -hmm. the, the 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 quality of it and it definitely met it so that was the only area where I would say it didn't exceed because they set up they set a reasonable bar in the trailers and they were right there. Um, and it eh, maybe exceeded a little bit because there's one scene that was really really kick ass. Um, but otherwise, like it was like I went in thinking, okay, we'll see what this is. I don't care about Blue Beetle. Whether you're talking about Jaime Reyes or or Ted Cord or Tony Cord, excuse me, like it's whatever so mm-hmm. i i, I think it's much. ted i think it is ted it is ted okay mm-hmm. yeah I probably no but i i agree with this this exceeded my expectations i didn't really have any like you said i didn't really know blue beetle uh at all so i didn't really come in with any preconceived notions um and so this was a pretty low stakes low investment sort of thing for me but not only did this movie exceed my expectations but i, I was also surprised by the uh, amount of seats that were filled in the dartmouth movie theater at a one o'clock showing on Friday afternoon, which oh, nice. it, it was, it was decently filled. Uh, oh, and also kudos to me because I timed it out perfectly. I arrived just as the opening credits were starting. So I was very excited about that. Didn't miss a second, but missed all of the commercials and the previews. So 
That's awesome to hear. I'm happy for you. I timed it out on the nose. On the nose. I was I was pumped. I timed it out perfectly, but at the, but not in the way that you did it. I got there, got all my food, got set up, went to the bathroom. Totally had time that's to a, come back. That's a good move. Then I it still hadn't started, and then I was like, oh no, did I lock my car? I'm like, I, I was like, I and I had my iPad in there. I was like, ah, I don't know. So I yeah. ran out, locked the car, came back. Movie was starting right as I walked back in. Was it was it unlocked or did you just stand away and just locked it? And make I just sure? stood away yeah, and locked yeah. it. I didn't care. The stuff was there mm-hmm. afterwards, so I, we were fine. There we go. You're good. Okay, yeah. awesome. I like it. So that, that was good stuff for all the way around. We, we had some good luck on our hands. Yes, there. look at that. Um, so, in your opinion, this is a, this is a fun question here. Blue Beetles powers, abilities, background is a blend of what three other superheroes? I think your assessment of it is is pretty spot on. I think the, there's the, only the third one where I may be a little eh. So I don't. Well, want to I, there I think thunder. there's there's a couple different ways that you can go out here, but the one that we'll talk about this here is uh, Iron Man, Green Lantern, and Venom. Obviously, you know the Ted. Uh, the Ted guy is more of like the Iron Man archetype there with having all of this genius tech, you know, Jaime Reyes really just kind of falls into and is chosen. Uh, But that's where the Green Lantern comes in, right? The ring chooses him uh, much like the Scarab chooses Jaime. Uh, And he can also create whatever weapons he can imagine. Right. So that's uh, where where Green Lantern comes in too. The Venom thing is with the symbiosis uh, where they kind of connect and like having a host human and a, intergalactic type of go. uh item there yeah that's actually i but see they, there you go like when i first saw it, i was like venom but then i was thinking about it now it's like eh, maybe not perfect like to- totally makes sense in the venom front but the other two especially it's like the, mm-hmm. even with iron man like his stuff kind of like his suit feels nanotechy uh so it, it's to me if this is i think calling it this is iron man meets green lantern meets venom yeah yeah, or, or I think you could throw Ant Man in there certainly for the bug relations, but uh, having uh, you know Ted is not really um, not Howard Stark, uh, Hank Pym, uh, but there is a sci- rich scientist benefactor behind uh, Jaime Reyes, much like Paul Rudd's Ant Man, Scott Lang's Ant Man was right. So mm. there, there's some similarities there aside from the bug stuff. I think you could even make an argument for Moon Knight, just again, kind of with like the symbiosis. And having like not really voices, but that that sort of com- a conversation going on with an entity, uh, right. I think there is some some sort of uh, similarities there. But yeah, you know, there's a couple maybe Batman with all his gadgets with the, with the cool beetle, uh, the giant beetle bug could mm. be like the the Batmobile, Batwing, or or Batflex uh, crawler thing, whatever that was. Yeah, yeah, maybe with with on the cord end of things. But I really think like the way you put it is the best way. That's why I was like, I'm not even going to try and think about this any further. Cause yeah. yeah. A couple, a couple different ways you could do that there. I think I'm my, I think I'm dying out here. Am I sketching out on you? You are sketching out on me a little bit. Um, do you want me to take thing? I'll take us into the next thing then. Yeah. All right. So where does this rank among other recent DC movies? So we're going to go all the way back into late, last year late 2022 black adam came out at that time uh we also had shazam since then the flash which we reviewed as well and then blue beetle so those four west where does blue beetle fall yeah so i was thinking about this and i think i think the flash and blue beetle are close uh certainly in in a tier separate from black adam and uh in shazam too right so but i think what i liked about the flash is that they took more chances and hit on more things it's, they have more memorable comic book moments comic book movie moments blue beetle does a lot of things really well it's a, it's a solid singles hitter could be maybe a number two or a number eight in the lineup sort of thing you know you know what i mean could nice table setter or maybe you get that double lead off man in the eight or nine slot but i think the flash is more of your like 240 average 30 home runs like kind of like a kyle schwarber type who can hit bombs but mm. it may strike out a lot I think you're being generous to Kyle Schwarber right now. Uh, no, he's well, right currently, but I just think <laughs> yeah, throughout the yeah. totality yeah. of his career. Of course, yeah. no, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yes, no, I think that that is that is a pretty good way to describe the Flash. Um, and then when it comes to Blue Beetle, I, to me, if we're going to keep this analogy up, to me, I think Blue Beetle is like Bill Miller in the year that he won the batting title. Like out of okay. nowhere, he goes and surprises everybody, and he's the leader in the clubhouse. Can he maintain it? I don't know. 
but he's like he did a really good job and there's no way denying it so for me that th- this gets number one of this grouping so this guy bill miller the blue beetle hit two grand slams from uh both sides of the plate in the same inning this is what blue beetle did for you huh well now nah. No, again, really. Is that that was the same year, wasn't it? Uh, it might have been. I don't know. Maybe it was 03 the year Remember, before. Did you, but I don't know. Cl- did you collect the the bazooka cards at that time, or were you out of card collecting? No, I was out. I was out. Of okay, game. they had they had like these like comic cards for bazooka joke because obviously bazooka gum came with them, mm-hmm. and they had it for Bill Miller where he hit grand slam on both sides of the play. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. I believe it was against the Texas Rangers. Sounds right. Yeah, okay. I, I believe it was. I don't know. I'm not sure though. But Can't okay, tell you're wrong. Uh, yeah, we'll go with it. Yeah, I think that's that's good. You know, Black Adam, again, I think I remember mm-hmm. having a similar reaction uh, to Blue Beetle as Black Adam, huh. uh, where it was like, there's nothing big about this. They don't do anything like really spectacular other than maybe uh, the JSA, right, and the supporting cast of Black Adam. But there, it was a pretty boilerplate, solid movie. So I disagree on this front. I think that Black Adam was solid. I did. I remember watching it thinking, this is better than I expected to be. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought where Blue Beetle, we like, I don't know. Black Adam was like, I don't think this is going to be good. That's how I felt. And I, I don't know if you were, I don't feel like you were. Yes. Different. Yeah. I wasn't excited for, for Black Adam. I, I had more, um, I don't know, what's the word? Like uh, more indifference to Blue Be- Beetle. Right. Yes, that's fair. So at the end of it all, I thought, yeah, Black Adam was good. I had a fun time. It was solid. Blue Beetle like had, has heart. And I think as much as Black Adam has solid action, Blue Beetle has some really, really good action. Like, mm-hmm. I get what you're saying about the home runs, like, um, like with the Flash, like where it has Michael Keaton in it and everything. Totally get that. But I think that Blue Beetle, like, I, I'm taking Blue Beetle over the Flash every day. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it, it's interesting because we'll, this kind of rolls into the next question with my thought where, uh, where does this rank among comic book superhero movies that were recently released, right? So mm. uh, maybe within the last year or two, I think, I think Spider-Verse is up there. You put in T- Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, rightfully so. Um, I, I, I missed that from the list there. But yeah, I think I went Spider-Verse, Flash, uh, or Spider-Verse, Guardians of the Galaxy, Flash, Blue Beetle, Ant-Man 3, Black Adam, Shazam 2. But I had some questions uh, about Guardian 3 because it just came out on Disney Plus. I went to go rewatch it and it was very depressing. I had like it was a very dark movie uh, yeah. upon a second rewatch. And I'm just not sure if the rewatchability is going to be there for me. Like I would go back and enjoy a watch from Blue Beetle or from The Flash or obviously Spider Verse. You didn't, does that make sense? You didn't catch that that was. I'm, I'm hung up on this. You, you didn't catch. No, that was I dark? knew. I knew it was a dark movie, but coming back to it, I was like, oh man, I, it was really dark. I think I was yeah. more like upon the first watch, you still kind of have the excitement of like, where is this going to go? So like, gotcha. while you know that it's uh, like dark stuff's happening, you're still kind of like invested into seeing where it goes. But now as a rewatch, I'm like, oh, I don't know if I want to go through and watch all this torture stuff like in the beginning. Like, it's it's it, like the first 15 minutes is like a tough get through. I would rewatch. Im- I would imagine that's a tough rewatch. I don't know when I'm going to do it, but I, I I loved that movie. But I that's definitely one where you can't just like, hey, I'm going to pop it on and watch yeah. this shit. Like this is not this is you, you got to really sit down and invest in it. Whereas like across the Spider-Verse, TMNT, Mutant Mayhem, and honestly Blue Beetle too. I, I think those are movies you can kind of just pop on whatever and you're going to be fine. Mm-hmm. No, um, I, I agree. But um, we have a similar we have a similar feel to all this across the Spider Verse, Guardians Three, TMNT, Mutant Mayhem, Blue Beetle. Then I'm between Ant Man and the Flash, and I think when we get to our retcon episode that we do at the end of the year, this will be the third time we've done it. Mm-hmm. Ant Man, I had too high. Uh, I do want to rewatch it before I, I uh, alter the grading, but I I gave it like an 89, and this is not a better that's not a better movie than Blue Beetle. Yeah, no, no, I I agree too. And even just from a CGI standpoint, I think they do a lot mm. better with the CGI. I think this is going to come up here. Uh, the, the suit looked awesome, right? The suit looked great. Yeah. Um, what was the most rewatchable scene from this movie? We're in the same page on this one. There's no question about it. Like where where he, like Jaime, where uh, Blue Beetle and his family, like they all at the end get going. Like in, in mm-hmm. specifically when after uh, Jaime's mom gives him that speech. Once he gets, like, he comes in, the music that they played, I meant to look up that song, but it was perfect for that whole fight, the like hallway fight sequence. 
I forget what it was too, but yeah, that I remember thinking the the musical sequence with that. Yeah, it did really work. Although what didn't work for me was the mother's speech. The mother's speech didn't didn't land for me. The whole mother character didn't really work. It felt like a little redundant with having the grandmother there as well, kind of being that like uh, matriarchal uh, you know influence on him. The so. mother the mother speech kind of landed. It landed. You know what it was that this was when. The uh, what was the AI's uh, not the AI, the um, Kachi Kachi, Kachi. G or something? Oh, oh, yeah. oh, you're talking about the scarab or the actual like oh, bodysuit? Yeah, yeah, it's like the Ka- Kachi G. Yeah, I think it's like Kachi. That. I think it's Kachi. So when she like quoted the mom, Kajida. I love uh, Kachi. Yeah. I loved when she quoted the mom and said, like, let's kick their ass. Mm-hmm. I love that. Um, the speech, I was like, okay, like, I'm excited to see what's going to happen, but yeah, it wasn't necessary. It was odd. Like the, that character was, yeah, so, so of of all of them, the way, the way she was written. She was my least, uh, yeah, probably my least favorite of the family members. Might've been the acting. Might've not been. It might've been. It just, it didn't, it didn't work for me, whatever the case was. But for the most rewatchable scene, I agree. Once they, once Jamie reconnects with the scarab after, uh, you know, seeing his father, uh, who had just passed there and kind of, again, coming back into the fold. He gets the big mega sword, which I think it might be an anime sword. Uh, I think I always saw that somewhere. Yeah, that He's kind of like, like dragging it in the line there. And he's got, it's like a heavy, heavy, uh, almost like an executioner sword. Uh, that was really cool. And then he kind of figures out that he can make up any weapons that he wants. Of course, it's the culminating fight scene. You mentioned too that all the family members kind of get their own spot. It's a little cheesy, but they all get their own little moment to shine with these uh you know old outdated uh devices right yeah so a couple things one with the big sword that was awesome i don't know if the manga berserk is the first one that introduced that sword but that's the one i think of when i when i see a sword like that so that was i like that was so cool the other thing when you talk about all the family getting their moments uh uh, Nana was oh my god, she was the, great. The Nana one, the the first time I'm like, oh, who is this lady? She's like kind of getting into it, and she's like yeah. looking over the map and everything, you know, like that. Yep. Like, that was kind of funny. Then you know, she was like a resistance or something like that, right? So yeah. it's like it was pretty. That was pretty cool to see. She was awesome. That was like like you know, the sister moment was kind of cool, and obviously, um, what's his face, uh, Rudy was like was fun all around. But yeah, getting getting Nana to like when she like when her hair drops and she's holding that gun like. Like, like, I forget what the sister's name is. But she's like, why do you know how to hold that so well? Yeah, yeah. And she's just got, like, the, the freaking Gatlin gun. She's just, like, <laughs> mowing people down. Like, that was that was very fun to see. Oh, she was um, good. Yeah, so, but again, there's not, like, there's not a huge amount of action scenes that kind of replay out here. You know, I think there's, there's some good scenes that, that are setting. There's a lot of great stuff going on with the family. But, you know, you, you get the mirror match uh, villain here, too, which will come up in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but what do you think will age the best from this movie? Um, I think Bruno Mar- Mar- Marquezine's career. Caliente. Gonna, uh, because the second I'm like, she she's she got the look and she was good. She was a good actress. Like, I think she's she's going to take off from here. Um, yeah. And like you said, like the on screen chemistry was was great. Between the it, two. it was. And it was a little like risque. You know, yeah, there, there's like there's like boner talk in there, and then like about wh- where do you want to ride me? You know, like that sort of th- at the end. You know, she she gives some steamy looks there for uh, what I imagine is a PG thirteen movie. Yeah, that was uh, they they were they were definitely uh, having some fun on, on that end of it. Um, the action sequences, the the action there was like I think it was like three ones that in general were awesome. Um, and even the intro to the blue beetle suit, those kind of things can be like. Okay, cool. I thought that was kind of like he had no control over it and everything. I was like, all right, I, I you know, because there's there's a lot of this that, that we've seen this before. You know yes. what I mean? And that's kind of just the state of comic book movies and, and, and just kind of the comic books in general, right? These characters were written in comics. They're going to be inspired by other heroes. And it's going to be a, like we talked about earlier, a magnumation, a smashing of different heroes put together with different powers. So I think it's kind of hard to, avoid that yes and i i agree and this is kind of why my like larger my uh, like overarching review of this there are those bones of like huge superhero origin story i just think they did some of those things well i yeah. thought that yeah, yeah. was done well so it's like yeah mm-hmm. it, it, like has been done before yes but i liked the way they did it absolutely so, yeah i yeah. agree 
And then the heart of this movie, I mean, that's mm-hmm, big thing. We've mm-hmm. talked about it already. And then in general, the suit, the way it operates, again, like you said, it's it's Iron Man meets um, Green Lantern meets uh, Venom. Mm-hmm. I thought in general, it, that like that, the way it functions is great. And the way it looks, not just from like the design being cool, but the CGI, how well it's done. Like this is, this will stand the test of time. I think it looks really cool. I love the overall tone of the movie. It was fairly lighthearted. You know, you mentioned the uh, the heart of this movie. I think that's, you know, the family's at the center of it. Having that extended family all in kind of a close knit, uh, close quarters, I think was really great. You mentioned the Nana, uh, Rudy being conspiracy theorist. I thought it was hysterical. Um, I think that was just great stuff with the with the long rat tail uh, in the back. I think that, that yeah. that's good stuff. Yeah. The we mentioned the the sexual innuendos there. I was watching Blue Beetle in action. Like you said, the, the suit was really cool. And I thought the uh mix of martial arts and kind of toggling back and forth almost like Spider-Man to going from stun mode to kill mode, you know, like that sort of thing. Like I thought that was cool. And here is what I did like, although it kind of goes off the deep end a little bit later, but killing the father. I think that added a, a st- level of stakes to this. Uh, which I think this movie, you know, I'm not sure if it would have had, you know, the, the meeting in the afterlife or whatever that was uh, after was a little bit too much. Mm. Uh, yeah. But that again, I thought, I thought it all kind of worked for, yes. again, w- with the movie's tone, the dynamic of everything. But I, I like the fact that they killed someone off close to him. We're going to, I'm going to keep the afterlife chatter for a little bit later. Cause mm-hmm. I will we'll just leave it at that. But I agree. Like actually, offing him and i was thinking in the course of that whole like they they laid the perfect foundation for it too like i had a he had a heart attack and you mentioned it and then you kind of move on for a second we gotta keep moving forward like we're fine mm-hmm. whatever and That's then he's gonna totally come back up later to yep it comes up later and they and and when they started like the whole attack i was like this is gonna he's gonna have something happen to him it's gonna happen and they they like i felt it like it was very for me it was definitely i i got more emotional in this movie than i expected to yeah, absolutely. I think there's there's a strong family element that you're rooting for, right? It's pretty easy and they're pretty likable. Um and, and all like the again, the ribbing on one and one another and everything. Like I thought that worked out really good. Uh what do you think will age the worst from this movie? Hmm. Okay. So we mentioned the mirror uh match villain, like yes, just in general. Like look, hey, Carapax, he had a an interesting story and I, but again, like we're talking about Nah. See, I I didn't even really care about his story, like because you I knew that was going to come up. Like halfway through this movie, I was like, he's going to sacrifice himself at the end there because oh. it was the moment that he looked at his um uh is it, yeah, locket, the, the locket, you know, yeah. yeah, the first time that that gets mentioned or the first time that you mentioned that you know he used to have, you could tell that something wasn't going to be right with him with just like certain looks. And then mm. like this guy's going to sacrifice himself. We know Susan Sarandon's like the real bad guy here. And he was just kind of like the bodyguard, the muscle. Um, so there was, I, I just saw that coming because he also very clearly is a Latino man. I just felt like it made, made sense. Gotcha. So I still, e- either way, like I, I didn't like, I, he was just rough. Like I wasn't a big fan of like, the, Hey, the, the design of his armor at the end was really, really cool. It was interesting. Yeah, for yeah. sure. But yeah, other than other than that, him and Victoria, they didn't do a whole heck of a lot for me. But I th- and that was definitely where this movie lost points. But I think they did a good job of like hiding them in the course of the movie. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree too. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think Susan Sarandon is a good villain. I think she plays a good corporate mean girl. You, you know what I mean? Uh, I think she does that very well. But uh, you know, again, I don't, know. I, I, don't I don't think, think... that Go she's ahead, done sorry. that a, a couple of times. I feel like she's played that role a lot. Right, I'm not saying in general. I'm saying in this movie, I just, I just felt she felt kind of clunky to me, and I don't think it was the writing. I think it was more her. I think she was trying to, she was too cookie cutter. Well, I thought something that was very, very uh, lazy, or maybe even cookie cutter, was her reasoning for her heel heel turn, right? Because her and Ted are brother and sister, right? To their their father of Cord Industries there. But the grand, the the father and Victoria were like minded in being like all all in on weapons manufacturing. Ted was more of the benevolent type, right? Uh, but at, on his deathbed, they leave everything to Ted, and just and they they chalk it up to sexism is what they say. But I was like that. I feel like that's just so lazy and just like surface surface level deep right because what a, a great thing and i'm thinking of this through the movie it, it, it like took me out of it for a second it was like 
you have this guy who is a benevolent guy. What if you have the father who's making this decision, have it, have a change of heart on his deathbed. It's like, I've made bad decisions. I don't want Victoria to make those bad decisions. I'm going to hand the company over to Ted who has a kinder heart and a yeah. different approach to this to change the company around. He then runs it into the ground. She takes it over and it is, and she's pissed about not getting the company. And now she can finally run things her way. I don't know. That seems simple enough. I agree with you because I think that that is how she acted in right. this movie that's what this movie felt like the whole time the they it felt like the whole like hey this is like a sexist that she gave it to to ted instead of her i was like well you mean that the why are we going to explore that more are you just going to throw it's that just out said there and, and then yeah, yeah 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 it was it was a throwaway thing i'm not saying you couldn't have done it and made it work but you just you didn't like it was just it was out there and like, all right we moved past it. So maybe I would have felt different about her performance. Maybe I still don't think I would have. I thought she was kind of just like fine. Like, okay. Like she wasn't overpowering enough in the movie that as like that, that it, it bothered me. But yes, I agree. Like that was the way that was used was just like, it was just a throwaway thing. Yeah. And what I, what I found funny is, you know, the, the reoccurring of her scientist henchmen there, Sanchez, who she kept mm. referring to as Sanchez, whose his name was not Sanchez. Yeah. And there, he has that big moment. He's like, that's not my name. My name is blah, 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 whatever, whatever he says. In the IMDb, <laughs> let me see here. Harvey Guillen, I think he's on What We Do in the Shadows in the TV show. Oh, his, my goodness. His role is Dr. Sanchez. That's amazing. <laughs> what? So that is his name. I mean, according to us, right? And from, from our perspective there in our universe. Yeah, I'm wow, that's confusing. I'm actually curious because when he did the full name, I thought it was like maybe I'm wrong. I, 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 I've i only seen some of what we do in the shadows, like not enough to, to include it on my um with the DSG list. Uh, sure, and, yeah, yeah, but but like I was, I thought he had like a really long name there, and I didn't know if that was like the joke they were kind of trying to play off of. Oh, but that's his, his name in real life, yeah. No, I mean, it could have been. Uh, but yeah, so I, I thought that I had a good laugh when I was putting the, the script together. I was like, oh, that's that seems weird. Um, how about uh, an incoherent uh, or, or glossed over backstory of the Scarab? Yeah, I mean, because we're, we're told that this is like a world destroying device. Yeah, and it has a mind of its own. So like, I, I wonder, like, I, I assume once they become one with Jaime, right, that it's like a, some of his goodness takes over. But yeah. if the idea is for the scarab to be this world destroying device, why would it seek out a good hearted person? I, I, to me, that that's actually a fair point. Well, maybe it's because it's so powerful. But either way, I, I, however, if I try and logic it out, it's not going to satisfy. Yeah, anything. no, I know. It's that's. I think that's why it's like a great unanswerable question because it, it, it does yeah. kind of gloss over in the opening credits there, and you kind of see some like interesting stuff with it, but it's not really touched on. It's a good. It's a good unanswerable question, and personally, I I thought the way the movie moved, like the like to the beat of jazz, some would say. Um, <laughs> I thought it was like it, I didn't even think about that in the course of viewing it. No, I agree. I just went with it. This was this came up over the course, uh, you know, of, of reviewing the movie after the fact. But yeah, uh, I think I think the pacing was pretty good actually. I got yeah, no, it it, it was, and um, the other thing was um. On what will age the worst? We touched on this already. For me, mm -hmm. I, just the, the Jaime dad conversation in the afterlife. I, my thing is, if it's in his head, okay. If it's in the afterlife, it just feels like so out of place for this movie. Yeah, it's 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 an odd scene. Again, this is uh, Black Panther, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, or, or whatever. There's probably a couple other moments there. Frigga and uh, and Thor and, and Endgame, you know, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, it, it, it seemed a little weird. Uh, I think he was in the afterlife, though. OK, I and think it's fine. the afterlife. Yeah. OK, by the way, I've been this whole time. I'm trying to figure out what his full, I can't find his full name from blue beetle it just keeps saying dr sanchez yes yeah, like, everyone's just slandering him left and right but i feel like okay so he in in what we do in the shadows his name is guillermo de la cruz so I, they definitely said he definitely said de la cruz oh yeah blue i beetle. can see yeah yeah so yeah. maybe so there might have been a joke that was on there that he um, had him put, put the name in there that's interesting yeah. But or how, yeah, about, how about the the white lady at cord industries uh the receptionist there who just kept calling 
Jaime Jamie, like even after like he corrected her. Like, I don't think that happens in real life. <sighs> it's a cosmic gumbo there. Yeah, Corey in the chat. Um, but uh I don't know about that. Like I feel so <laughs> people get names wrong. No, I you know what? I've definitely But if witnessed. someone but if someone corrects you, it's I've, like I've no, no, it. no really? Yes. Yes. I don't know, man. That's why just like flatly be like, no, fuck you. I'm gonna call you what I want. I don't know. That that seems uh extreme. So maybe maybe the manner in which she did it was extreme, but I've definitely seen that before. Well, it's like this is clearly that person's name. Okay, I got it. Say it wrong again. No, it's this. Okay, got it. Say it wrong again. Like I've, I, guess, I have, but seen it that. wasn't even like if it's close, you know. Like if you say like Hemi to Jaime, but like to be like, no, I'm going to continue saying it the way I said it the first time. Mm, well, yeah, <laughs> that's, I don't was, know, that, was, that's interesting. Yeah, she was an asshole. There's no question yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, so this rolls into a good question, where you know whether it's the the Jaime dad convo. Uh, who actually did a really good job. I think he is Noho Hank's lover in Barry. I knew oh. I recognized him from somewhere there, but uh, oh. I like that actor. He was good, um, though. Yeah, you're right. Um, but yeah, so whether it's that convo or the, the gloss over story of, of the Scarab, uh, some more unanswerable questions. Is this in James Gunn's DC Universe? He might have answered this already. Maybe. It needs to be. Did he? Did he not answer? Did he, did he skirt the question? I feel like he's skirted it so far. I think he was like waiting to see which way the wind was going to blow. Like if this was going to be a well-received movie, he's like, eh, maybe we'll throw it in there. Yeah, no. I, I mean, I think just wait to see the finished product too. And I mean, this is awesome. Like it's, it's very good. So I don't know how you don't go forward with, I, I would think there are I think it should. Things. I don't see what the issue is. You know, I don't think it's a bad movie by any means. I think he's a cool character. You know, like I don't see why, why they wouldn't there, have him. In there. You have three quality characters from this. You should be able to move forward. Yeah. So with that said, this this gets a sequel. I it should. Because so we've got the the it. mid and end credit scene there, right? With with Ted being alive. Uh who I heard that voice was uh Jason Sudeikis. Hmm. Another okay. playing another famous Ted. Okay. All right. Is All right. Ted Cont Cord. Ted is Ted Cord, Cord Ted Lasso. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Could be. Why not? Yeah, I don't cool. know. Who the knows? Crossover, there? The crossover we've all been waiting for. This, yeah, it could be. It could be nice there. Um, yeah, well, no, we got that. What does Rudy do for a living? Because <laughs> he's just like a, a handyman fixer who creates this uh, camera blocking device, signal blocking device, like on a whim in the back of his car, knows how to fly the, the blue beetle bug. Uh, but you know, so I, so at the end, I just assumed that he was like, cause he was crapping on cord industries and how they make like shitty tech and all that stuff. Mm. Right. Mm. But so at the end, when, uh, Jenny replaces his truck, I thought she was going to get him a job at cord Industries. I did too. I did too. And maybe she did, but it, it was weird that they didn't go and say that. And also to that end too, with Rudy, like, so it's, how does he know how to fly blue beetle? Like the, the, the blue beetle machine or whatever it is like, like out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Um, I trust I trust that he kind of knew what he was doing just because he's so like into weird stuff and he has like a tech understanding. I was fine with it. But well, that's what I mean. I got, what was his previous job? I thought we were maybe be like, oh man, they fired me because I couldn't do anything. And he just like used to work at court or something. Maybe. I don't know. But my, I, I just wanted to bring this up with the mom when she was flying out afterwards. Like I wanted, like I kind of liked where she was like losing her shit as she was flying it. But at the same time, I'm like, why are you flying it now? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Why, yeah. why is Rudy not flying anymore? Are we just trying to give you your moment at the end of it all? And I think when I look at it all, Wes, like, I don't, I'm, I mean, maybe like one point is lost because of like how they, what they tried to do with her. But other than that, the big losses for me were like Carapax on points, Carapax, Victoria, and then like the weird afterlife combo. Just yeah, out there. I tell you something that I did like. I should have touched on this earlier. Was the sister taking a dump in uh, Victoria's sweeper? <laughs> right? <laughs> love, love a good girl dump, you know. Drop yeah. the heat. Yeah, that it's was, hot down there. You gotta, that was you funny. gotta let them go. Yeah, that was that fun. Was, yeah. uh, okay, this so this is actually works in nicely. Uh, who had the best performance by a side character? Wait, wait, wait. I had one. Oh, no. Question. Okay, go yes. ahead, please. So uh, we talked about a ton already about the um, the afterlife question. So not to ruin your transition, I apologize. No, don't, but don't. This isn't so much an unanswerable question, but I want to hear what your thoughts are for this as a foundation 
for for a sequel idea. Jaime, Jennifer, and Rudy all back for the sequel have pivotal roles. In okay, this. you got to bring the sister back too, right? I mean, she I'd she was too to close to the fold. But yeah, I'd I hear be, you. Yeah, I'd be open to it, but definitely have to have those three. Those are the, the those are the most like those are the most versatile characters of the three. I think maybe the mm-hmm. sister. Then Ted Cord obviously is set up to be in the sequel. Then a guy named Booster Gold, who I know you're not familiar with. I've heard this name before, though. Okay. Well, him and Ted Cord's Blue Beetle are buddies. Mm. And Booster Gold is like this OP guy from the future, but he's a total fucking jackass. And like not in a mean way. He's just a dummy. I remember hearing this was like one of the characters that D, uh, James Gunn wanted to develop or someone like that would be obscure that would, would want to fold in here. And I think like the fan casting was Chris, uh, uh, not Chris Pine. No, the the best Chris. Uh, not, not Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I, that, no, that would def- Chris Pratt could definitely play Booster Gold. And I think we heard that we were, that was one of the projects. Yeah, you're right. That, that, was, that, yeah, re- I thought so. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe that's why he, James Gunn didn't say anything because – he wanted to see how this goes, see how it played out. And then if we're going to do a Booster Gold movie, then you'll have Ted Cord in there. And then you can bring maybe these other characters in the mix. You don't have to, but you can. Because Booster Gold's from the future. So there's a whole lot of different dynamics. And that's why mm-hmm, I'm not like, mm-hmm. bring the whole Reyes family back. That's not why I'm saying that. Like, it's because they like time travel. I don't know if you can make it work where you have all of them there. That's that, that's interesting. I like that. That's okay. That's a good unanswerable question. I answer yes. Thank you. That's all I need. <laughs> I live for uh, approval. There we go. Uh, best performance by a side character. Whom from the Reyes family gets chosen? It's down to two people. As much as I said what I said about Rudy and him being the one that should go into a like a movie that's set in the future, I take him. I mean, take Nana over him in this one. He's awesome. He's great. But Nana Reyes, I mean, just what she does at the end, she you know she has this, like, matriarch kind of forceful way to her. Um, but, like, she doesn't – she's still, like, sitting in the back and just kind of letting things go and being supportive where she can and so on. But then when she lets her hair down mm-hmm. at the end, it's like, oh, Nana's, Nana's fucking ready to go. I think that first moment for me when I realized that with her is uh, when she gathers the family together after uh, uh, the father dies and she's like, now is not the time for crying. Mm. Now is the time to get back at her enemies. And she like really riles it up. That's why I feel like the mother's speech a little later on falls flat because we already got that strong kind of team gathering kind of like nut up type of uh, moment from her. And this is where some of the acting maybe was not great on her end. But this is where the writing fell flat because in the end she could have still given a good a good speech, but in a different way because mm-hmm. you're, where where Nana is like ready to go and she's like a borderline leader in all of this. Mom could have been like, "I'm not the one in charge. I can't go and help you do this." Like she, mm-hmm. there's a way this could have been written better. No, I, I agree. There, there's another work around there, but I do yeah. want to give my love for Rudy Reyes here because oh, yeah. uh, George Lopez really goes for it here. I mean, he's just kind of letting loose. He's going nuts. He's falling all over the places. He's doing physical comedy. He's got one liners. He's improvising on the set. Um, he's, he's a funny guy. I, it was nice to get a comeback performance from uh, George Lopez here because I watched, I watched a little bit of the George Lopez program when it first came out. I believe it was on ABC uh it was a funny show it's a good show it was on abc first i, I think so i could i know wrong. it was on nickelodeon know. later on i know that mm, was uh, it a, yeah. wait are you talking about the late night show or the sitcom the sitcom yeah that one's one that was on nickelodeon later mm-hmm. okay yeah he said, he said it's done a lot like I remember, those are the two things i remember him for yeah no i'm a, I'm a big george lopez guy you know I'm, I'm, I'm a fan of his whole collection yeah well there you go who knew? <laughs> See, he uh, won, I love Corey, Corey gets it here, and yeah. he won him over. That that was such an over the top performance. Again, needed a little bit of zaniness because there was a lot of emotion, a lot of heart into it. So I think he he offers that pretty well. Yes, and Corey in the chat too, a good example of why you want to watch us on our YouTube channel. I know today Wes, Wes gave you all a freebie over on Twitter as well. But... I did not. I didn't even let them know. I just cut the stream off like a uh, oh. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Just like the, when the parents find out that you're you're watching the scribbled porn, you know, they just pulled the plug. Finger to the throat means death. All right. <laughs> let's see. Uh, who lost this movie, Wes? Uh, maybe this movie. 
Maybe the movie lost. No what one went to mean? go see it, unfortunately. Mm. It, it may, you know, it kind of suffered from this dead in the water purgatory stage of not being the old DCU, but maybe not quite being in the new DCU. So we don't really know where it is. This is the same problem that Shazam 2 uh, suffered from. It's going to be the same problem. It's the same problem that The Flash suffered from, despite all of its uh, big swings there. It's going to be the same problem that Aquaman 2 suffers in December or whenever that movie comes out. Um, yeah. So it, it, it's it's kind of just tough where it is. But I think given the cards and the hand that it was dealt, it did a whole lot of good. Yeah. But I, it, in spite of that, it may not matter. I think this is a fair assessment. I think I'm just on the opposite side of it, where it's like people who are choosing not to see this movie are also losing out on seeing a, a fun movie. Yeah, um, but yeah. at the same time, like I don't think you have to go to the theaters necessarily. Maybe if you want to go on the four dollar day, mm, yes, you know. But true. I don't think it's necessary to go see this in theaters. No, um, no. But if you haven't seen, well, the thing is, there's been a lot. There's been quite a few good movies out recently, where maybe you don't right. have to, especially for adults and for kids. But this is definitely one where you can both be on the same level. Like I don't think Mario and and TMNT weren't that, or or Spider Verse, but this is a little bit. I don't know if it's, it's a little bit older, but either way, I, I, I think if you're just ignoring this because because of the whole DCEU, like it, like the, the mess that it's become or the transition period that it's in, if you're just ignoring mm-hmm. it because of that, you're missing out. Like if you and I do think that Jaime Reyes could last into James Gunn's plans. I think it should. I think it's worked. I love the whole like Miami Vice type of feel, but in like a futuristic world, you know, like the, the whole palette, I think, was really, uh, really worked for me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, who won this movie? The Reyes family. They were the big takeaway here. I think they were the driving force of it. Love the connectivity of the family there. The extended family having anyone, everyone under a tight roof. Although I did get major anxiety seeing uh, that first scene where the scarab connects to uh, Jaime and the whole house is ruined. And mm-hmm. it's like, oh, the the work that has to go in. They, the guy already, they, they can't keep their shop open. They're losing their, I guess they're losing the house anyway. But yeah. Um, I think the, like the people who put this movie together, I mean, I know I list off on hell or angel, uh, Manuel Soto, the director, mm-hmm, I, mm-hmm. I, I don't know where to give credit in, in that regard, but like, it's just like this, the action in this is great. The CGI and all of this is really awesome. The acting like by and large is very good. I mean, we're picking apart mm-hmm. a few people here, but like, there's a, like Rudy, Nana, Jaime, Jennifer, I'm blanking on the sister's name. They're all great. They mm-hmm. were all they were all awesome. Like again, and, and the dad, you've, you've talked to him about him a ton. All of them, and then you have a few, like a few that you know kind of fall flat. But that's like that they they did really well. So Milagros, the sister's name. Milagro. Okay, I'm giving it to the director here, um, because I think you just everything came together well, and I think that he he deserves more opportunities from here like after the way this movie was uh, was put together but I, I there may be other people that deserve it but um but yeah that's my winner no i like that it's a, it's a good stuff it's a good movie so just to, to reiterate nick gives it gives it an 87 i give it an 85 uh you know it's a great origin story uh cmmcu yeah. rankings averages out to an 86 there we go there i can do that math good math um but yeah so that's that's good stuff go check out blue beetle have some fun Go spend yes, four dollars at your theater on August twenty seventh. Yes, I wait, agree. Wait, 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 no. I just want to I just want to. That's little that? Uzi's vert. Little, oh. <laughs> I just sounded so old there. Little Uzi vert. I just want to rock. It's off the the soundtrack, so that was 